Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guests today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I'm super excited for this one. We have an amazing guest lined up from the other side of the world, from Australia. So we got a fun little conversation here, and we're going to talk about busting change. For me, change is one of those things that I personally look forward to. I love change. I will just move things to move things, but I think a lot of people especially in business, we don't want to change. And then when that trickles down to our teams, those people really hate change. So we're going to figure out how to move through this process nice and slow and smooth the right way. I have Lana with me. She is a professional change buster, which is the coolest title ever. Lana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, I, I'm super excited for this process So, uh, or for this conversation to go through your process. But tell me, what is it when I say managing change and helping people through change, like what is it that you actually help people do? Yeah, great question. There are so many different elements that need to be managed through change and it can be a bit overwhelming and a bit like, where do I start? So my particular specialty when it comes to change is communicating through change and helping leaders to do that with their chain, with their teams. Um, so I found often I've worked in uh, corporate for more than 15 years, working on some major change transformation programs um, and our leaders, no matter how long they have been leaders, still often get quite nervous and anxious about that moment where they have to tell their team and then lead them through it. So I really help them with their communication, their communication style and their messaging and helping to lead their teams through it the whole way so that they feel like change is being done with them rather than being done to them because nobody wants that, right? Mm, and I think that's where a lot of the, the pushback and resistance comes from is because in most cases, leadership, whatever the size of the company says, this is what we're doing. This is how and when we're doing it. And this is your role through this process. So it sounds like you may have a little bit different approach to that and you get better response. Am I right? Yeah, that's exactly. That's that's the whole point is helping people to actually get their teams involved in the process so that they feel some kind of ownership over it and that exactly what you've just said. It's not being done to them. It's not a foregone conclusion and here's the process. And I think that, the one of the reasons that that is such a common experience for people is that leaders and anybody who's talking to a team about change they want to feel like they have all the answers before they go and tell their team and they just don't have to and actually it's far more genuine and you can get better results if you don't go into it with an absolute you know laser focused idea of what the final end result is you absolutely need to know what your goal is and what you're trying to achieve but having a bit of flexibility about the way you can get there is you know can really open things up to have a really good result mm, yeah that's that's so important and now i'm curious how do you how do you start this process well let me back up and ask you a, a better question first is when do people call you in to help facilitate this process so usually I would say too late. <laughs> usually it will be well, exactly when you have uh, exactly when you have laid out, okay, we know what the change is and we've told people and this is going to be their role in them. And can you help us to, you know, make that change stick and to help with that adoption piece? And really that's too late because if we go right back to the beginning and get involved at the start, what we can do is tell people what the goal of the change is and when they're going to hear more and get their preferences for how they want to be communicated with and how they want to know and really crucially find out what their real questions are um, because often we make a lot of assumptions about what people will want to know and what their questions are um, which don't necessarily always turn out to be their real questions um, and so when we can really go in and listen 
early, then we know that we can be in touch with what the real concerns are and be dealing with that throughout the whole process rather than assuming it's one thing and going down that path before we've even talked to anybody. Um, and then you can also find opportunities for your team to be engaged and have like be able to co-create different parts of the change too, which can be really powerful. Mm, yeah, when, when people are involved, it creates ownership. And, and there's there's an attachment to whatever they're creating. So they're even more on board with the company. I love that. Um, so then, okay, so when when you do get called in, hopefully it's not too late, uh, but, but change is a big word. So can you give me some examples of projects you've worked on or, or what change could look like for an organization? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it can... It can be really small and it can be really large. So some of the smaller ones and things that are really quite common and happen regularly are, you know, changes to uh, organisational structures. So you might be restructuring. Uh, maybe that means teams that reported in somewhere will suddenly be reporting elsewhere. The team might be slimmed down. So there could be redundancies that are as a result of that. There could be opportunity for people to be promoted within that. Uh, so they're the kind of thing, you know, restructures are things that happen all the time, particularly in the corporate world, but also in, um, you know, SMBs and uh, smaller businesses as they're growing and scaling, then things need to change. So that's quite a common one. Um, to the complete other end of the spectrum where I've worked in banking before and I was working in the Netherlands uh, just after the financial crisis back in 2009 and clearly what had happened before in banking was not going to cut it anymore and we had to completely change our strategy and so my role within that then was working with our executive and then working with the leadership team to define what are the major priorities we need to focus on going forward to make sure that you know we're in really good shape coming out of this and so that involved the top layer of management. You know, there was 50 people that came in and running workshops, really getting their thoughts on what are the big ticket items that we need to focus on to move forward with this. Um, and then equipping them to be able to have the same conversation with their teams when they went back to their own countries to say, well, how do we take this and adapt it in a way that's relevant for us here? Because what one thing, operational excellence, for instance, might mean somewhere, is not going to mean the same thing somewhere else. And so giving people the flexibility to be able to make it mean the right thing for them and empower them to go and do that um, really means that when you come to the adoption part of change, so the really critical bit to make sure you don't lose your investment that you've put into the change, then that adoption and making change stick has a much better chance of success. Mm, and that's that's obviously what most people are worried about, right? When Anytime you make a change, is this going to stick? And is this going to cause backlash for my team? And we can, exactly. can we make sure both end up happening for us, not against us? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting process. And for for small businesses and entrepreneurs, I don't think I don't think people really tend to give this a lot of thought. And I can speak from experience in my my last business um, that I sold. I would just change things and and do what I said before. Like, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. And awesome. Everybody's excited, right? And, and think that everybody is as, as excited as me. So for a small business owner, uh, maybe someone who has, let's say, five to 50 employees, what are, what are some things that they need to think about ahead of time before they even talk to their team? But if it's like, it's a change that's on their mind, what's the process that they need yeah. to go through? Um, maybe even before they call you in. Yeah, great, great question. There are a few things that are really, really important. I think the first one is just a general awareness piece for yourself to understand how people generally react to change, regardless of what the change is going to be. Um, and so you can just Google the change curve and you'll come up with a whole heap of different, um, different things all saying the same thing, but essentially upskill yourself so you have a good idea of what the reaction is going to be to people and how they react when uh, when you tell them. So people will go through a phase first of uh, denial that anything is going to change. And then depending on what the change is, there might be a period of anger where they're really kind of fighting against it. And they'll move into acceptance. And then beyond that, then they start to get into change acceptance and, you know, adoption. So firstly, having a really 
solid understanding and just preparing yourself that people might have that reaction and they'll be going through those different stages is a really important thing. Beyond that, having a very clear articulation of why you're making the change and what you want to get out of it. So this is the same as you would do for any real business strategy is knowing what are your objectives and what are you doing? Because once people can understand why we're changing something, then they can get their head around it in a more rational way and be prepared then to take part in it. But if your why isn't very clear or not particularly compelling, um, then it becomes quite difficult for people and the resistance starts to set in. So that's that's one. Then I would say really understanding where you are prepared to uh, bring your team in to help solve part of the change. Because when you can identify those areas, and it might be, um, for example, maybe maybe you're looking to grow um, in, in a new market, potentially, you want to bring in the people within your team who have the skills and experience and who are client facing to inform that decision. So then they feel like they've been able to be part of it and can help to shape where that's going. And they can see that they've had a hand in whatever that final outcome is. It's really important, though, when you're thinking about where I can get my team involved, that you are absolutely prepared to stick to that and allow them in and allow them to own part of the process. Because the worst thing that you can do is go and say, I'm going to get you all involved. They give feedback and then nothing changes and they feel like, as we talked about earlier, it's a foregone conclusion. So those are some of the really key things. Firstly, understand how people are likely to react to the change. Be really clear about your objectives and your why so that people understand that and then see where you can engage your team so that they have a real ownership because it's going to make the biggest difference when it comes to making the change stick down the track. Mm, that's so, so important. And I, I can't tell you how many times I'm just like blown away by, and it happens not even just with change, but with running a company in general, when leadership will say, uh, we'll use core values for an example. Like telling the truth is a core value at this company. And then you see them and they're spewing lies left and right, or or they maybe, you know, they bend the truth a little bit. If you as a leader, you say one thing and you don't embody it or prove it out on a day-to-day -day basis, you're you lose your team immediately. And that's one of the hardest things to get back. So especially through the change process, if you're gonna, I love how you say if you're gonna ask for feedback, like use it. <laughs> it that's how often do you run into, like, do you ever clean up change messes and, and have to go through this process? How often do you run into people who ask for feedback, but then just toss it out completely? Yep. Yep. Quite a bit. And it's usually through feeling like they're doing the right thing. Like I, I really believe, you know, people turn up and they're trying to do the right thing. And they think that asking is the thing that they're supposed to do. So they go and ask but they never really had any intention of asking it. And it's then realizing that the process of doing that actually really erodes your trust very quickly. Um, it would have been better if you had no intention of taking on any feedback, not to have asked in the first place and to have said from the outset, this is the process and this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going through it and this is why. I mean, maybe there are reasons why. Um, usually you can, really, if you really ask yourself, you can find somehow for people to be genuinely involved, but maybe there's not. But if you're not going to take on that feedback, then don't pretend you are because that's even worse and more disingenuous than, you know, not asking to begin with and just going through the process. Yeah, that's it, that would be kind of like if I, if I asked my wife every week, hey, where do you want to go for dinner? And she says whatever applebee's could be a steakhouse and every single time i say no we're gonna go to mcdonald's because i know better like this is i've decided that's where i want to go she would probably punch me in the face after a very short <laughs> yeah. period of time <laughs> but that's what we're doing we're asking for feedback and not taking it um so i think that's that's a really good tip so something that that we do in baked into the harmonious architecture and i found this to be very very useful i'm curious if you have a similar model Whenever we talk about change, which for us is the M, modify, we always look first to the A, which is analyze. So we have specific metrics in place within our own company, within all the companies that we work with and consult with our clients, so that if we are going to make a change, we first measure things 
so that we don't have to come up with reasons. We point to numbers and, and facts. So we, yes, we ask employees uh, and team members for their opinion because that stuff is invaluable, but we also have facts and data to back things up. So we can say, hey, you said that our, let's use a stupid example, our lead flow from a particular source is not really that good. Well, you're actually right because we, we found that data here on this spreadsheet and thank you for picking up on that. I really appreciate it. So we are going to change the way we do these things. So do you help your clients put metrics in place or do some sort of analysis so it, the entire thing isn't resting on just a, a gut feeling? Yeah, absolutely. And you are spot on. Like, and I love hearing that, that you're, you know, you're straight back to the A of what it is that's happening at the moment and having that analytical side to things. Um, it, it is so important. And then you've also established your baseline as well, right? So that well, then once the change has been implemented, you can see what the difference is and you can actually measure it and know that your return on investment is there. Um, and so that is really, really critical. So it helps you to set the case for change. Uh, it helps people to be able to make that link back to business strategy and makes that why you're doing it really, really believable. So what I will do when I'm working with somebody is to set out what is the, from a communication point of view, what is the story that we're telling here and how does that story stack up? And if in that, you know, we get a lot of, oh, we've got a gut feel, something isn't working quite right, but we're not sure what it is. That's where I'll really um, tease that out with them and say, well, we need to go back and what access to data do you have so as we can make this a really robust um, piece of, or a really robust narrative that we're talking about. So that's not just a story, it is fact and your people believe it and buy into it because they know that to be true. Because also when you're talking to people, People will have an, anal an analytical uh, side to how they're coming at it. Other people will feel like they want more of a qualitative uh, story that uh, you know links back to the reason for doing it. It's really important that you actually have both so that you can see this is why these are the hard facts. Then you've also got your baseline to measure, but people can't really refute that. And then you add in the qualitative of, you know, what does this mean for us in our day to day at the moment? What are those frustrations that we have or the obstacles to doing something better because the data is the way that it is? And so my role in that is really helping to structure that story in a way that is, you know, absolutely credible for people that sets them up for success so they can really have that good conversation with their people to understand the why and we call it, you know, have a burning platform for change uh, so that people really can see the reason that they need to do it and the reason that it's a priority now as well. And so if that data doesn't stack up, then you've got to come back to asking yourself, is it necessary or are we changing for the sake of changing? And then that becomes a whole other conversation and maybe it's actually you do something else instead, which comes back to the earlier point of getting involved early. Yeah, definitely. That, that's that's the important piece. So um, I, I think change is one of the most fragile components of running a company of any size. As soon as you have employees, the way you manage change has to be heavily considered. I, I love that you specialize in this because I think at the end of the day, people, your employees, they, they just want to feel a sense of security, a, a sense that you care about them, and you're not just doing things to make more money. And when people push back on change, it's because they probably ultimately feel like it may affect their job, it may affect their income, the the security of their role. And managing that process is really, really crucial to keeping your culture and your team morale intact. So um, yeah, if you have, if you think you might want to make a change, please reach out. Lana, where can we learn more about you and how you help people with this? I know you have a really cool uh, download if we slide into your DMs on LinkedIn. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got what I have is a change buster checklist for you. So if you want to come over and say hi on LinkedIn, you'll find me by just searching Lana North, uh, same way it's written on the screen there. Come and drop me a DM and ask for my change buster checklist. And I would love to share that with you. It's got some of those tips and tricks and watch points for when you're starting to think about communicating with your team through change. So come over, say hi, and I will have send that your way. 
I love it. And thank you for being a guest. This is a, it's an important topic and it's one that I didn't really know existed from a, from an outside consulting perspective. I'll just be fully transparent. I, I said that to you before we started the recording. Uh, you're the first person I talked to that specializes in this, but um, I, I love that you do that. This is so, so important. Like I said, and I wish more people took the the seriousness of it because of all the things that we've said that the potential downsides of it, losing culture, losing team, losing people. Um, so please go, go over to LinkedIn. It's on the screen. If you're watching, it says, say hi on LinkedIn. I mean, she couldn't have made it any more clear for you. So head on over there, download the change buster checklist, which I love. We're talking with the change buster herself. Um, Lana, this has been an awesome episode. Thank you for coming. For those of you watching, listening, I will put all of that in the show notes. So don't worry about catching it on the episode. Um, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another second of this crazy, ridiculous show where we hopefully help you grow your business just a little bit. The daily bite-sized business advice. Um, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining Harmonious at Lunch. <laughs>